this, you know, after their, you know, my teaching day is finished, I felt, okay, I need to go and I really should record a few more videos. And, you know, before you know, per student, you, you've got, you've just kind of gone through 45 minutes. Now, for those of you who know me, I am a bit of a perfectionist. And I said to Sally, I said, you know, I didn't even put on any fresh makeup. I just thought, I'm just going to roll. <laughs> so for me, that's a bit of a struggle to kind of not have things just the way I always want them. <laughs> but well, I, I, in fact, I think I may be being a bit overzealous and just trying that balance. Because of course, it is our livelihood. And I guess there is always that deep-seated fear that parents will just, you know, that in a couple of months, time we're in far 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 videos so i think we're in some ways kind of overcompensating and feeling oh, we've got to really make this work because otherwise parents could turn around to us and say you know you try it's not really working out so we're just going to leave it um and of course you know one student minus every month you mean how much is that actually worth to us and when we add everything up, is it going to pay the bill to pay? I know we do have, there's, there's obviously attached to this lots of deeper level concerns, but um, no, we certainly have been feeling quite tired. So if you're feeling exhausted from this, please know that you are not alone. No, because the, yeah, your, your sound is a little distorted, Sharon, but um, you'll have to, again, it's just in, the internet and uh, not a lot we can do. It's one of the troubles that we all have these days, isn't it? Um, but I think one of the problems for me of teaching online is actually it's very exhausting just talking to a screen because you don't get any energy back from the screen. When you have a live pupil there, you get the energy coming back to you that you put in. And when you're, you're teaching online, you know, you end up giving an awful lot and it just meets this screen. And, and that is hard work for both you, me and my pupils, I think, and my students, I think they find it really hard as well. Um, and I think also kids find it quite hard to really concentrate and to focus for a whole, let's say, 30, 45 minute lesson. And you know what we're like as teachers, we can get quite into, can't we? We can get quite engrossed in trying to explain things. And actually, sometimes we just need to stop the explanation. I think what Sharon and I have started to do a lot of, and I did some before actually, but was to video what it is that I want to teach. And I'm doing that quite a lot, I don't know about Sharon, but with technique in particular. Because I think teaching technique online is really going to be challenging and um, you know goodness knows what the technique will be like of all our pupils in six eight weeks there's only so much you can actually do I think technically online um, especially with younger students as I say I think it's going to be really interesting but um, I'm recording more and more stuff and sending it through to the to the parent and then they're watching it with the pupil and hopefully you know they're beginning to get it um to 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 watch the the videos during the week and that's really really helpful but do you know what i think really does work well in a um in a piano lesson online or it can work well you know and that is musicianship and you might say well you might you would say that sally but um, I'm hoping I can show you that some of the activities that you can use in the musicianship um, field actually really do translate quite nicely. And also, um, they are developing an area that a lot of students, maybe we don't work on enough with our students because we get so involved in the technique. So Sharon, I have started the record button, just so that you know. <laughs> And um, shall, do you want, shall I, I'm going to go on with my activities because I've got seven to get through. So I'm going to do four and then we're going to stop and have a quick question. And, um, and then we'll, we'll come back and do another three. I am just going to say we are that now maxed great. out in terms of capacity. We have got a full house. Um, I'm afraid if you leave us, you probably won't get back in because I suspect there's more people waiting behind there okay so stick with us and um and let's get going all right sharon are you going to just change the screen for me a little bit and i'm going to change there we go yeah okay and guys i'm just going to say um if you again any questions 
please just put them into the chat. Um, I'll be looking out for those and um, we can then be asking Sally those questions that you have at the end of the first section. Okay, over to you, Sally. I'm super excited about this. Okay, all right. So I've been looking forward to this all day. I'm just going to get my camera in exactly the right place. Um, because um, I love singing. Um, I'm not a singer, but I do love singing. And I think singing is at the heart of all music making. And I think we have to be musicians at the piano before we are pianists. And the pianist comes out of the musician, if you like. And quite often we manage to miss that whole element out. We often manage to miss how, you know, you say it and you go, that's really silly. But quite often we manage to miss the musician out of the pianist, which then can cause considerable problems later on. So um, one thing I'd like you to know, like you to tell me is if you can hear me enough, because uh, people were saying you couldn't quite hear me. So just let me know if my sound is loud enough. Um, Sharon will let me know if I'm not loud enough. So I think the one. Yeah, just, just, just to clarify, Sally, everyone can hear you just fine. Good to go. Okay. So what I did yesterday when I was teaching is I did a lot more standing up. I organized myself so that I could stand up when I just needed to talk about things or show things on the computer. And I only sat down at the piano when I actually needed to demonstrate anything on the piano via the keyboard. So for this one, and I do need you to all join in with this, okay? If you're sitting there at home, nice and comfortable, just stand up, let's get a bit of energy going because you are my, you are my um, five to eight year olds at the moment, okay? And this piece is called No Robbers. And um, the first thing I want you to do is to listen to my song and it goes like this. Off I go, no robbers out today, no robbers out today, for we are singing on our way, no robbers out today. I wonder, being a seven-year-old, could you do that movement? And this works online, yeah? I show the movement, just watch me first. I'm going to go, shoulders clap, shoulders clap. You do that, and I watch the student do that very good now listen to my song again and i'm going to do this movement and i want you to see if you can count how many times i tap my shoulders how many times do i tap my shoulders my turn your job down there is to stand really still and straight hands by your side listening off I go, no robbers out today, no robbers out today, for we are singing on our way, no robbers out today. And then I'd ask the pupil how many times they thought they heard it. And, um, and then I'd say, okay, I'm going to teach you the song now. So it's my turn, your turn. And this really does work. It Obviously, there's a little lag, but nevertheless, it works. As long as you use really clear, big gestures when I'm going to sing and when they're going to sing. And quite often, they copy exactly that as well. So I would sing. Off I go, no robbers out today. Your turn. And they would sing. My turn. No robbers out today. Your turn. My turn, for we are singing on our way. No robbers out today. That's a bit tricky. Let's try that. For we, off you go. For we are singing on our way. No robbers out today. And of course, I'd be able to hear them. I can't hear you lot. Can you imagine a hundred strong choir of piano teachers all singing away? Ah, okay. Here's the song all the way through again, and you're still being seven. And this time I'd like you to count. How many times do I say the word robbers? How many times do I say the robbers? Off I go, no robbers out today. No robbers out today, for we are singing on our way. No robbers out today. I was so busy singing it, I forgot to count there. No robbers out today. No, 
I thought it was three times. And you see, I'm a, I would even do that with my students. I might even pretend, <laughs> actually it wouldn't be pretend at all. I, uh, I might say, ah, oh, you know, I forgot to count. Can we do it together? You sing it for me and I'll see if I can count it, yeah? So I'd quickly reverse it and do it the other way around. And then I'd get the pupil to see if they could sing it all the way through. They might or they might not, yeah? And that's one of the things I would then record and I'd upload it and I'd say, your job over the week is to practice singing the song along with me, sing with Sally, and see if you can do those actions at the same time. The five-year-old will find that quite a challenge. Six-year-olds do as well. Seven-year-olds, pretty easy. Eight-year-olds, complete piece of cake, straight away, probably, yep. So that's the first one. No robbers out today. It's all about movement. It's about getting off the piano stool. And when you get the pupil to stand up, it was lovely yesterday, I got lots of them to stand up and I'll just tuck my stool in, they all went, oh, bless them, so neat. But you do, you want them to stand either behind the stool, I don't know if you can see, but my stool's here, or get them to stand just in front of the stool, but somewhere, you know, obviously where they're still in the camera. Okay, so that's your first one. Let's go on with the second one, which is called Apple Tree. And um, you'll notice a common theme. OK, and you might say, actually say you're just doing the same thing over and over. In, in one sense, I am. But you've got to remember with a pupil, you're not going to do two songs in the same lesson. You're going to do your teach two songs in the same lesson. You're just going to, you know, each song will probably take two to three weeks. So you have a teaching technique, you know, in the same ways you have a technique to teach staccato or to teach pedaling or whatever like that. There are techniques you use to teach songs. So one technique we've talked about already is using the gestures, really strong gestures from my turn, your turn. And another technique is to divide the song up into small phrases before then putting it all back together again. And here's another technique that you've already just heard me do, and I'm going to use it again here. And this is about asking questions to get them to listen. So in this one, it's called Apple Tree. And I want you to listen to my song about the apple tree and see how many times you can count the word apple. Mm -hmm. Off I go, apple tree, apple tree, will your apple fall on me? I won't scream, I won't shout, if your apple knocks me out. It's a lot of fun to do with a class, this one, because you have a passing game. Yeah? All these are classroom based. Um, songs in the first instance and they're great if you've got a group of 10 children and they pass around the clap and then you have to move the hand out. Of course in a piano lesson we have got usually just two of us unless it's in a, in a, in a group setting. So I've adapted this a little bit and i am made it into a little song where you're going to stand up or sit down every time you hear the word apple. So what I'd like us all to do this okay and you're going to start by sitting down so make sure that you're sitting down and you're sitting at the front of your chair. And I hope I'm really hoping I'm not the only person doing this because otherwise I shall feel very silly. So you need to join in. So feet flat on the floor. And every time I sing the word apple, you either have to stand up or you have to sit down. Sharon, I hope you're going to join in with this as well. Yeah, for sure. Just have to keep checking on it, you know. So standing up and then sitting down. Are you ready? Off we go. Apple tree, apple tree, will your apple fall on me? I won't scream, I won't shout, if your apple knocks me out. Yay, very good, very good. Now, that, that can call, that, you know, that can be a lot of fun because uh, where did you want to sit down? where did you expect to kind of sit down? It was somewhere around the, um, I won't scream, I won't shout, because all of a sudden there were no apples, were there? And you were busy going, oh, I'm still standing. Is that right? Is that right? Good, yeah, that's, that's part of the fun. The other thing to get used to when you're doing this online stuff is the fact that the pupil, the student, is always behind you. So I can see Sharon standing up and sitting down at a completely different time to me. But she's standing up with me in her world, yeah? And um, I'm just beginning to get used to that myself. And I think what you do is you have to have 
conviction to continue. Obviously, if you stop, then it just means the pupil won't have you singing. You were standing up and sitting down to me singing, but that was at a different time to when I was actually doing it in real time. Does that make sense? Just stick to your guns and do it. Just do it. Ignore anything else. And we're going to do the same with rhythm as well in a little bit as well. Okay. So this standing up, sitting down, listening for this word apple, what does it actually do? Okay, it brings energy to a lesson because all of a sudden you have a bit of movement. It brings fun to a lesson because uh, you can get it wrong, but it also helps to focus pupils. So they have to concentrate and listen for those words really, really carefully. And um, ideally then, you know, you teach them a song and you go on and do a whole load of other activities. But if you can feel a lesson is dragging a little bit, you can just put one of these songs in just to, I often do it in the middle of a lesson where we've kind of looked, they've, they've played for me, whatever it is they've been working on. And then before we move on to something new or talking about or discovering something new together, I will, I will do a song like this. Let's do my third one. Third thing. Um, and that is using props and having fun. Yeah, I've just been talking about fun. And um, I think just because you're online doesn't mean to say that students can't move around the room. Um, with this song, and I'm going to stand up again because I sing so much better when I'm standing up. Um, and I have more energy when I stand up, you see. So when I sing this song, quite often with my pupils at home, is they run around the room and they jump up and down on all the rests. So it's, it's this song, it goes, rain is falling down, splash, rain is falling down, splash, pitter patter, pitter patter, rain is falling down, splash. And you know, I meant to get my Wellingtons out and have them here because I thought that would be fun, wouldn't it? To get the student to put their Wellingtons on and to, um, you know, have a piece of paper or something on the floor that, they, oh, that would make a great, a great sound. I'm, I haven't got any paper to hand. I've got something here. Let me just try this. I'm just thinking it would make a really, really interesting sound to have crackly newspaper on the floor that they have to jump up and down on. Let's see if I can create that. There we go. There's my lake. There's my puddle. Yeah, kids love puddles. Rain is falling down. Splash. Rain is falling down. Splash. Pitter patter, pitter patter. Rain is falling down. Splash. Mm, quite enjoyed that. You, you, you do know, Sally, that all the boys will suggest they bring in a bucket of water. <laughs> Because I think that's a really good idea to have a bucket of water because then you can have Spotty Duck, who was going to be my next rock that I was going to suggest. Yeah. So there's no reason why online piano lessons can't have fun and can't have a bit of um, humour in them. So you can see I have a little collection of ducks here. This is Super Sally Duck. One of my pupils bought me Super Sally Duck because she knows I like ducks very much. So that's Super Sally Duck. She reckoned it looked like me, hair and all. And this is Spotty Duck, <laughs> Beethoven Duck as well here, celebrating his birthday, of course. And then I have Pirate Duck. Wow, wow. Um, okay, getting very excited. So I was going to bring out Spotty Duck anyhow. And I love the idea, Sharon, of a bucket of water. Not sure what the parents would say, but they might go for it. <laughs> <laughs> you could have one for later. You could have just a little container like that, couldn't you? You have a little bit of water in it. You know, you have to play to bring these lessons to life. You've got to play, and you could have rain is falling down, splash. Rain is falling down, splash. Pitter patter, pitter patter. Rain is falling down, splash. Why not? And of course, musically, you know, OK, this is fun, but there is a musical purpose here, isn't there? Because what we're asking that child to do is we're asking them to match up the movement with the rest, because that's what the splash is. The splash is the rest. And actually, that movement for some children, getting it absolutely bang on, is quite interesting to watch. Some of them will anticipate, some of them will wait till later. Um, and that, you know, that can really 
give you some information about that child, whether they can do that absolutely on that beat. Okay, um, so I'm just going to keep moving on, moving on, moving on. Yes, I'm going to put my ducks away because I'm going to go on to the next song. And this song, this song is just got to be one of my favourite songs. <clears throat> and this is Engine Engine. And um, again, it's a song with movement, but we're going to use this song. This comes in book two, this song, and um, we're going to use it for rhythm work. Because so far we've we've just explored kind of the really fun action aspects of it. Um, there's obviously a lot more we can do with all the songs I've covered so far. Each one of them has a specific musical concept behind it, which I'll show you in a, in a little while. But this song, Engine Engine, comes in um, quite close to the start of book two. And uh, we're going to see if we can do some rhythm work from it. So I might start by saying we're going to go on a train. And when it's not coronavirus time, I go on trains quite a lot. I go on slow trains and I go on medium sized trains and I go on very fast trains as well. So often make little stories for the kids as well. Let's go, though, on just a just a, a nice regular kind of train. And um, could you be on the train with me as I sing the song? So I'm not asking them to sing the song because they don't know it. But I hope you're over there out there, folks doing the engine with me. So, ah, are you ready? Off we go. Engine, engine number nine, running down the Newbury line. If she's polished, how she'll shine. Engine, engine number nine, number nine, number nine. Could you say that? Could you say number nine, number nine? Keep going as you do it. Yes, yeah, your wheels go round. Keep going. Number nine. And I'm going to sing the song. Off I go. Engine, engine number nine. Running down the new grid line. If she's polished, how she'll shine. Engine, engine number nine. You still singing that number nine? Oh, okay. So that, that is the song. I'm not going to teach you the whole thing to, for the moment, but can we now see if we could work out the rhythm pattern of the words? So that little phrase is like this little, oh, I was going to say, it's like this little gold mine, the rhythm pattern of the words. Rhythm is a really hard kind of concept to get your head around as a child. However, rhythm patterns behind words, they're very familiar with. So if you just use that phrase, this, let's tap the rhythm pattern of the words. Let me show you. And I would use very much two fingers here, no more than that. Um, online really doesn't like clapping. I discovered this just this week and it cuts out clapping, I, I think, from my end anyhow. I don't know whether anybody else has found that. But using two fingers, I'm going to say the words and tap the rhythm pattern. Off I go. Engine, engine number nine. Could you say that and tap it? Remember to give yourself the off you go. Okay, go on, you do that for me. And I would stand and watch and listen, the student. But you see, it's, it's, what's good about it is it's having to develop their independence. Because <clears throat> A, they're having to tap the rhythm by themselves. I can't do it with them. And B, did you notice I reminded them that they had to say the off you go. Now you might notice that I keep saying that all the time. And that all my students are very, very good at remembering to say off you go. They don't always match up the speed that goes afterwards, but that's a different matter completely. And in fact, it's such an important phrase, off you go, off we go, off I go, that book one, isn't is called that it's called off we go because what that does is it brings you in in the right speed and when you're singing as well you can pitch it it will bring you in in the right pitch so often um students start to play without any sense of pulse having a sense of pulse knowing what the pulse is going to be is fundamental absolutely fundamental so get them used to saying off we go and immediately there's the beat. And they don't have to work at it. They don't have to count or anything. Just off we go. Counting comes later. So I got the student to tap the rhythm. I'll do that again just so that you get what I did. So I'm going to tap it first. Off I go. 
engine, engine number nine. Now, can you tap that? Remember to give yourself the off you go. And the student would tap it and I would listen. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard to tell depending on the, the signal. Sometimes it's a bit hard to tell exactly whether they got it right or not. But you can usually tell by, by the hand movement or something like that. So then you might say, I wonder whether you could work out what the rhythm language would be for that. Let's do it again. Have a listen. Now, rhythm language is the name that I give to uh, whatever I call rhythm. For me, um, quavers, eighth notes are T, T, and crotchets, quarter notes are Tars. So I would expect my students to come back with to me with T, 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 Ta. Different people have different approaches to that. So you use whatever rhythm language you like. One thing I would recommend probably avoiding at the moment is metrical counting, um, unless they've been doing it for a long time, really familiar with it, because a lot of kids actually struggle to go one and two and three and four. They really struggle to count and, uh, and to tap and to work it all out at the same time. So rhythm language is definitely the way. So they've tapped the rhythm there. And then I might say to them, can you imagine what that would look like if you were to write it down? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what the TTs would look like? Could you draw me some TTs? And I've got them at the other end with a pen. They've got the they've got a piece of paper or they've got a book, and they write down the rhythm. Having said it first, having thought about what it's going to look like, they then write the rhythm down. If you want to uh, do a screen share, you can actually get them to write it with their fingers, and of course they love doing screen shares and things. So that you can absolutely do that, and then whichever they show it to you and you go oh, that's fantastic here's the second phrase see if you could work this out here's the second phrase have a listen off i go running down the new green line could you do that and we go through exactly the same thing and then they discover it's the same rhythm and then you do the third line if she's polished, how she'll shine. Goodness me, it's the same. Engine, engine, number nine. So by the time we've got to there, all they've discovered that all four phrases have the same rhythm. Great, we're getting structure, aren't we? A, 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 A. So engine, engine, definitely kind of one of my, one of my favorite um, songs to be doing with kids for action, but also for pulling out the rhythm and for pulling out that idea of structure. And the other thing I was going to say was, um, having done the tapping, you could also do uh, get them to see if they've got some instruments. You know, it's not just the piano or the digital piano that they've got. You know, if they've got a drum, a lot of them have, or they go, oh, I've got a bongo, I've got a bongo, said one of my pupils to me yesterday. Go and get your bongo then. And he bongoed away, you know, and of course he did a little bit of an improvisation as well. If they don't have an instrument, then tell them to go and find something in the house that could make an instrument. You know, the house is full of lots of interesting instruments. They've just got to work out. Oh, that's an interesting sound. What happens if you play it this way around? Get them to explore the different sounds that they can make within their instrument that they've got. Right, so that's the end of activity four. I'm going to stop, change cameras, sit down and um, answer some questions. Sharon. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sally. I always love watching Sally do these. <laughs> these museums. And uh, I mean, a, a few things that I've just scribbled on here. I love the focused questions, Sally. I think that works really well because um, one thing I know I'm certainly finding in lessons is that you need to keep the student engaged in doing stuff. And I think sometimes what these online lessons are actually teaching us is that we do way too much in these, we have done way too much for our students in these face-to-face -face lessons. And if we continue to do stuff for them, they are going to look out the window, they're going to get this and um, things like this so i love those focused questions love the movement um 
and it can it can so change the energy um, and of course the props you know and going off and finding something or bringing something to the lesson um, that they have found around the house um, so yeah okay so I, I mean I think the thing is as well for the teachers is just use your creativity you know use these ideas use the songs if you want use the ideas though as starting points for how you can kind of build some energy into your lessons so that you don't end up feeling quite so exhausted at the end that you you've got the the center of an idea let's say um that happens in the middle of the lesson and then you kind of see what the student does at the beginning of the lesson and you maybe have got some some uh, work to do at the end of the lesson but the middle of the lesson is sort of the central part of it is the kernel as they say and you know that you've got that but it doesn't take too much preparation time because that's the other thing isn't it we're all finding it is. that it's uh, very very uh, um yeah it takes a lot of time for us to prepare um, yeah. <clears throat> okay so oh we got some people some people have been asking about words so i just want to say um just in case um you've hopped on maybe a little bit later and missed this but sally has these two brand new books um have been published um i know there's a third one on its way as well um but everything is in there. And Sally, I'm pretty sure you're going to be giving us a little sneak peek at some point later on. Yeah, well, shall I do that now? Shall I just give you... Yeah, that would be lovely. Sneak preef. Uh, a sneak preef? That's not the right, right word. Um, <laughs> sneak peek. Um, i just got to find it. It's there somewhere. Um, what I was going to say was... And of course, this, this video will go out on our YouTube channel. So if you want to re-watch, then you can do, basically. And um, you can, you know, you can write down um, anything that you need to um, from that and learn it. So this, um, we've got two books, book one and book two. These are books for the pupils. These are the pupils' books. And what I'm doing at the moment um, is I'm writing some teacher's guides and the teacher's guides are quite extensive. I've been writing the teacher's guide for Engine Engine, for example, which um, I don't know whether I can show you later, but it's 11 pages long, believe it or not. That's just for one song. Um, but to have access to all those teacher's guides um, is, uh, we have a, I have set up a ready to play Facebook group. So if you want to find that on Facebook and request access, then I can certainly give you that. And I will be sharing all the teacher guides in the ready to play Facebook group. So you might just want to keep keep thinking about that. And there is a YouTube channel on its way, which will have all the songs, has me singing the songs, has me singing them in so far, has me explaining some of the games, you can get to see me teaching a couple of my my boys with with some of these songs as well. And that will be growing as as um as as we get going on this one. So here's off we go. These are the contents and this is a progressive um, and systematic introduction of um, musical skills and concepts. So we start with steady pulse, we go on to rhythm notation, singing names, um, so's and me's, so me, crotchet rests, there we are, there's no robbers, you see that's the, that's the purpose of no robbers. And by the end of this book one, um, the, the, the tone set as it's called is so me re do, and this is all about engaging the the child's ear so that actually when they come to play it on the piano they can just do it ever so easily it's not a struggle the sound is in their head i had one of my students just before easter we were doing i think it was bells in the steeple or rowboat row it might have been rowboat row and um we did this we went through all the things in the book and then he sat down and played it he went and he looked at me with a big grin this is online and went i just did that and it was ever so easy I, yeah <laughs> well done you and every song has got these beautiful illustrations i've been working with a fantastic um illustrator graham uh long i ever so grateful to him and that it is utterly beautiful some of the the illustrations that he's done and we've tried i've really really tried to bring the whole thing to life it is very much the pupil's book um it's got lots of what's called i can 
um, going on here <clears throat> where they can sing the song from memory and they have to tick it, that's their book. There's also <clears throat> lots of uh, rhythms, for example, here that they have to clap and then put smiley faces and I'm there all the way through saying, Sally says, here's no robbers. So you Sally, I'm just, I'm just going to say, I think it's, or maybe it's just my screen that I'm still on the moving up contents page. Ah, oh, okay, it's a bit too slow then. Okay, maybe other people could let us know whether you're seeing me move or not. I'll stay where I am for a little while. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it should move. Yes. Hmm, yeah, it should move. Mm. And people no, say it's... It's all still on the, on the stuck on the moving up contents page. Yeah. Okay. Well, at least you're all having a good look at the, uh, the contents. <laughs> right. So I'm going to change my share and um, I'll, I'll stop that share. And I'm just going to show you uh, book two. Yeah, I'll show you book two. Um, so this is book two. Is that the one you saw before? Ah, that's, that, that's yes. Yes, that's the one we've been seeing. All right, so this is book two. All right, I've just been talking about book one, but this is book two. So I'll talk to you about book two. So book two starts where book one finishes, and it starts with the pentatonic scale, and there's engine, engine, and Sfunga Alafia, which is a lovely... Uh, mm, it's, it's, it's still stuck, Sally. I'm not moving yet. I'm just... Oh, right, okay. Okay. Well, that's so okay. Yeah. If, I, if I move now. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. So here yeah. you can begin to see the, the illustrations. Here's Tom Cat, Sally Cats, just and the students have to work out which phrase is which, which phrase has which tone set as it's called here. And then here's engine oh yeah, and then we're moving on to beginning to move on to what's called the relative stave here. And then we go on to engine engine. There it is. And each piece has an accompaniment with it. I haven't talked about that yet. But um, the pieces should be sung unaccompanied. But actually, when you go on to playing it on the piano, it, it, it could sound a little, um, a little dull by itself. So I've, I've um, made up, I've written a, a, a short accompaniment for each and every song. I'll do engine engine for you. these up I have to say <clears throat> and um, and that's what the books look like each one takes you there and we're going to be doing this rhythm rondo in a few minutes if we have the time so I think I'm going to stop the share now and um, maybe go back to doing a little bit more of the activities so because we've got another three to go and time is moving on that's good Great, great, great. So I'll just tuck my stool in a bit like my pupils. <clears throat> so this next one, now you can all see me, is Bells in the Steeple. And I was doing this yesterday with a pupil. And um, the first thing I wanted them to do was to watch the pattern that I do and copy me. So um, I had to reverse it to make sure that they got it right. So I was doing, I'm going to tap my left hand. I'm never sure whether you're looking yeah. Is that my left hand to you, Sharon? Yes, I think it is. Yeah. So um, you're going to tap your left hand on your thigh, tap, and then you tap your right hand twice. Tap, tap, thigh, hand, hand, thigh, hand, hand. Can you join in with that? And I wait to see the pupil could do that. Okay, lovely. So listen to my song, which is all about the bells in the steeple. Bells in the steeple, how loudly they ring. This is a holiday, ding, dang, dong, ding. And this time I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to see if I can do the movement at the same time. And I'm going to get that going first. Bells in the steeple, how loudly they ring. This is 
is a holiday. Ding, ding, dong, ding. If students find that quite easy, then you can just turn up the challenge a bit and do. So they have to turn their hand for the third beat. That's a little bit harder, yeah? Bells in the steeple, how loudly they ring. This is a holiday, ding, ding, dong, ding. And then of course you swap hands, you do it the other way around. And by the time you've done the song several times, they'll almost know how to sing it. So you hardly have to teach it. I mean, that's the idea. So all they're doing, Oh, we'll go for the hard one, shall we, straight away. Why not? Off we go, bells in the steeple, how loudly they ring. This is a holiday, ding, ding, dong, ding. And then what I like to do to extend some pupils a bit more, because some pupils will find that quite easy, and those few pupils, you can get them to conduct it. Get them to conduct. So teach them to conduct online. Now I have to admit, I haven't done this with anybody yet. So this is gonna be interesting when I come to do it to see whether they pick up the conducting and they can copy. So it's down to the right, to the left, down, right, left. And I'm doing it backwards. I hope that's, am I doing it the right way or not? I, can, I don't know whether I'm a mirror, mirror image or not. So I'm gonna do it the right way for me so that it'd be, Bells in the steeple, how loudly, etc. etc. Yeah. So really good one because it's in three in the bar, which is which is which is nice. So let's just move on because so far we've been doing most of them have been away from the piano. But now we let's see if we can um, move now to thinking about how you're going to really bring some um, engagement and activity at the piano. Because I think games can be played at the piano just as well as um, away from the piano. So in this next one, this is called Autumn Leaves. I'm not going to actually teach the song to you, but what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna play games with seconds and thirds. And you can do this either by instruction or you could do it just by listening. And I'm just gonna share my screen again one more time because I've got something I've started to do quite a lot is to create um, an individual PowerPoint for every single student that I've got. So as their lessons go on this term, the PowerPoint will become more and more, it will become longer and longer. But on that PowerPoint, depending on the, rate, the, the, uh, the level of the student, I'd either have the song and an activity um, at, or a piece that they're learning that I want to point out things to them about or it might have a keyboard on it, or it might have a stave on it. So as the term goes on, I can imagine that the things that are on my PowerPoint will increase. So let's play this little game. Whoa, here we go. So the game could be, right, we're gonna start on G. Can you find G on the piano for me? Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because some of them, people are discovering, have letter names on the keys and then they've taken them off don't know what the notes are or they go g g i don't know where g is so you know we've all got to think about how we help them with those so let's pretend that we found g and that's all fine and then the secret is to find out what note is under the orange circle okay are they going to land on the same note if they follow my instructions so i'm on g you might all want to do this at home as well Put your answers in the uh, in the chat box in a minute. Go down a second, okay? Down another second, up a second, up a third, up a third, down a second, down a second. Now, I wonder what note you've ended up on. I wonder. Shall we see if we can find out? Has anybody put some answers in? I'm not sure whether this will work or not. I've got a, I've, I've actually got a, um, I don't 
me just reveal it. Oh no, it's not there. <laughs> I'll have to play to get it to reveal. Let's see if it does this. <gasps> have you got... Oh! <laughs> it wasn't supposed to be G. It was supposed to be A. <laughs> that changed itself without... I, I'm sure I wrote an A before I started this presentation. <laughs> but maybe they got a G. Oh, anyhow, okay. Well, that clearly didn't quite work, did it? But that was the idea. Um, the other way of doing that um, is for you to play. So I might play without them being able to see, you know, um, I might play. And they have to tell me whether I've gone up or down a second. And they, or they have to match it on their piano keyboard again it's really really good listening and i'm finding that online we can do that that is really not a problem the the internet can cope with that okay so that is yeah that is just another little game playing on the piano it's good for their keyboard geography and um and that sort of stuff so let's move on oh, it's still doing that here's another little game that you could play and this is part of um this song Autumn Leaves, and this is about spotting pitch patterns. So which pitch pattern, I might say to my student, am I playing? I'd have done some prep work with them. Yeah, we would have done some singing, we would have done some step work or some second work or some thirds. So then I would say, okay, which pattern can you hear? And I might play something like, It is again. And they could either sing it back to me, hopefully, do me so me, or they could write on the screen themselves, number three, or they could have a whole set of numbers that they've written out and they could show me number three. Okay. Um, so that's again that's quite a nice one or you could play two numbers if they're a little bit more advanced you could say i'm going to play two of these and i want you to see write down which two i play so you might do for example or i might do asking them to do here is to recognize the pattern the shape of the pitch you might be looking at that and saying hey Sally there's no treble clef there's no bass clef there and that's absolutely right there is no because this is what's called the relative stave so on the relative stave the notes can move pretty much anywhere you can see I have fixed do on the stave do is fixed there um, and Do is fixed in very specific places. Um, so leading on, we have got, and I'm going to move on to the next slide, I think. Here we go. Because on the very next page in the book, we talk about clefs. I introduce this word clef, but I don't just introduce um, treble G clef and bass F clef. I introduce the idea of the C clef, the tenor clef, and the alto clef, and their different positions. And if you look back at what I've just been showing you, you can see that that matches up. So your does, uh, the top one is treble G, this one is bass F, this is the tenor clef, the C clef, and this is the alto clef, the C clef as well. So that I think it's important that students know that there are not just treble and bass clef, but there are all these other clefs as well. And they all, you know, clef in French means um, key, it literally almost unlocks the keys for you to play. And then I say at the bottom that pianists read from two of these clefs, the G clef and the F clef. Okay, so let's move on to the very last activity that we're going to be doing today. And this is back to engine engine. And do you remember I got you to repeat number nine, number nine. And we're tapping, I'm going to get my drum here, we're going to tap the rhythm pattern of number nine, number nine, number nine. And that's the rhythm that you can see on the, on the sheet there. I'm gonna to say to the pupil, we're gonna make that, we're gonna do an, uh, uh, 
a rhythm rondo, rondo meaning round. So that rhythm keeps coming round every single time. So what I want you to do, and I, again, I did this with a student yesterday, it worked really well, is they have to tap the rhythm and then count aloud, tap the rhythm, count around, aloud, keep going round and round like this, off I go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Can you do that? Okay, so I get the students to do it, all right? You, you, you do it yourselves, say off I go, and I want to hear you counting those numbers. And I can see Sharon is doing a really good job there because she was counting aloud. And you have to really, really encourage students, though, as I said, to count aloud. Um, so I'm, if, if they didn't count aloud, I, I go, hang on a minute. You're not counting aloud. Don't forget to count aloud. OK, because they need to feel those four beats. Because then what you want them to do is you want them to improvise or make up their own rhythms during those four beats. So again, I might show, I might say to them, you know, I'm going to tap this um, rhythm rondo. We're going to do that. And then I'm going to make up my own rhythm. So I'm going to go like this, off I go. I might demonstrate it first. And if the student gets stuck, there are some suggested ones that you could do here. OK, so again, I'd like you to give that a go. So you're going to tap the rhythm rondo, then improvise, rhythm rondo, improvise. OK, give yourself an off we go. OK, so. I can't hear what's going on. Sharon, I'm going to ask you to come off your, your uh, mute at the moment because what yeah. I want to try and do is I'm going to play the accompaniment and Sharon is going to do her rhythm tapping. Now, she is going to sound to me completely wrong, but I have to stick to my guns because to her it will sound right. Does that make sense? It's <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, hard. Yeah, it's quite yeah. hard to do, yeah? So, have a listen. Let's see if I can do it. Who knows? I'll give you the off we go, Sharon, in a moment. Okay. Are you ready? Off you go. Actually, off for me as well. <laughs> was it? Oh, really interesting. Really yes, interesting. Okay. it was. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what. What we what we could try is is where I come in hearing you. So if yes, okay, all right, okay, yeah. yeah, let's try that. If I just kind of yeah, yeah, okay. My computer's telling me it's time to go to sleep. Does that every night at nine o'clock. <laughs> Are you ready? So I'll just start. Yeah, I'll, 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 yeah. You come in when you think you, you need to. <laughs> Philippa says I'm in hysterics. <laughs> okay. yeah. We have to try okay. it. You ready? For you this time, Sally. Completely out. <laughs> <laughs> Just goes to show you on on a on a live internet connection. <laughs> oh, 
All right, so I'm, go I'm just going to stop the share here and um, come back to this camera. <laughs> I hope that that's given you all some, some ideas for trying some new things out in lessons. I'm sure, you know, that, that it's nothing particularly, it's not rocket science, um, but I think this idea of, of really, really using this time to develop musicianship skills and making sure that the understanding is there for your pupils will mean that actually when they come back, yes, we can pick up on the technique. When they're back with us, we can continue to promote really good, healthy technique, you know, use of a whole arm and stuff like that when they're playing these songs. But let's use this opportunity to actually get some musicianship work going. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Um, and I can see here there's actually there's been a couple of comments about screen sharing. So I think that Sally has maybe been a, a new thing. So if you haven't been screen sharing before, then yes, absolutely. Give it a whirl because it's another way of um, I, I was actually saying to someone um, another teacher online today how, you know, it's easy for for us to communicate just by chatting but when it's younger children or even teenagers it is when you do have those props it's where suddenly something comes up on screen if, if you're not having anything so there's no props there's no um you know things like what Sally's just been showing coming up on screen they can lose focus very quickly yeah i love the fact that they're all saying they're hysterics it didn't work but it was very funny yeah ab absolutely and you you know it's it is very funny and it, it's it, it is about the, it's about the laugh you know i was i was uh, i've got to share this i was i was teaching a teenager yesterday um and again sometimes when we're trying to be the best we can be we're very serious and i'm not saying it was quite getting to that i think it was actually it was what happened made me realize how serious it was but my, my three-year-old, uh, Ruel, uh, my mom had been out washing, washing my windows, as she does, bless her. And uh, Ruel comes around with his little, you know, the little kind of um, beach bucket um, and an, an old vest full of things. And was oblivious that I was watching him, but I turned my camera around to let my, my teenage students see. And it's, it was just amusing. It was just like, you know, all of 20 seconds, it's like, oh, look, my son's at the window trying to wash the windows. And it just lifted and it made me aware of how heavy it had got, even though I kind of thought it was going fine. But it was just an even, you know, just seeing her kind of broad grin. <laughs> so it is important that we bring humour to the lessons. It makes such a difference, um, not just to our students, but to us as well. Yeah, yeah, and just keep it really playful, as um, I think so important. I I quite agree. I think it was Nicholas or somebody said, you know, um, or Nicola, Nicola. Um, online is not a replacement for face to face. No, it it it's not. It's you know, especially long term. I think one offs are, are one thing, but long term, I think we'll all be very glad when we go back to teaching face to face. But on the in the meantime, we have to make the best of it, and we certainly can. Um, so thank you all so much for, um, for coming along today, and I hope you've enjoyed that. As I say, this video will be going up onto YouTube tomorrow, onto our YouTube channel. Um, if you want to come and join me over in the Ready to Play um, uh, Facebook group, then please do. And um, uh, Sharon, did you share any of the places where they can actually get the books. I, um, I was, Sally, I'm so sorry, I was just so much enjoying <laughs> the music stuff. So right now, I am posting inside the chat, uh, there is a link um, to Black Rock Music. And I am going to just say that until Sunday, this Sunday, the 26th of April, you can purchase both of Sally's books um, at 15% off. So that comes to a total of 23.72 for both books. That includes postage um, for those of you, um, most of you who are in the UK. Um, and the code that you will need, I'm just typing it in now, is capital M, capital C, 
four two six. So that is the code that you need to use in order to get um, that um, that particular deal and um, just to say that lasts until Sunday. Um, I should also say um, that this is, there was quite a limited print run, well, a, a decent size, but the books are, I think probably a good two fifths of the books that exist currently are, have actually been sold with lots. So I, I do suggest you don't wait until Sunday. <laughs> um, do go now, I know that Peter um, Simpson, who is a great friend of ours at um, Black Rock Music, does a fabulous job of um, getting everything posted out as quickly as possible. Um, I'm going to say that somebody was asking about Canada. Um, we are hoping that it will be available in North America in the next few weeks. We're hopeful that it will be available in North America. Um, if you want to see about getting a digital one, um, Jeannie, then maybe just come into that um, Facebook group if you like and drop me a message because um, Alfred UK are also in there and they'll be able to answer that a lot easier than I can. Yeah, publishers will be able to answer that. Yeah, and I'm just grabbing, I'm just checking, I've got the right link. I'm, um, yeah, so I'm now going to drop the ready to play Facebook group link into the chat. Okay, so there you go. Um, so I think it's that just link is also, there. also saying, you know, um, to anybody who's not um, in the community yet, the, the, in the Curious Piano Teachers, you know, we have a lot of fun over there. We are, everybody is helping each other get through this time in, in such a wonderful way, actually. And um, we currently have a free membership offer. You've got a whole free month to come in, feel the benefits, feel the love, feel the warmth of all the other Curious Piano Teachers. And you know, um, use the resources that we have on offer. That's completely free for a month, and you can find the join page over on our website, which is the Curious. Many yeah, and I've actually just grabbed that now, so I'm going to just pop that in um, as well. Okay, so there you go. That link is in there now, and as Sally says, that will give you a free month, lots of resources, and if you've just had fun. Um, being kind of out with us tonight. Um, we do these community chats where um, I've got to say it's kind of it's the highlight of my week. <laughs> Actually chatting with, um, with each other um, just informally. Just, uh, there's just a couple of questions come in so I'm just going to quickly answer those. Um, Susie's asking about um, phone screens for their online lessons. Mm. You see, I don't get on with phone screens, Susie, just because they're too small. Um, and it, I think some of some pupils do use them. I'm not sure mine do, but uh, most of them have an iPad, and I I don't know whether they can see details clearly. My sus my suspicion is they can't. I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, and I think I think small. I think phones do definitely pose a further challenge. So if our students are listening to us and watching this on a tiny screen, uh, I know I was on a, on a meeting call on Saturday evening where there were eight of us and it was a nap, I downloaded it on my phone. And I really did actually struggle. I, I, I struggled to make sense because everything was, was so tiny. Um, so I think really kind of a, a tablet, iPad size at the smallest and if they have a desktop or a computer that's, or a laptop that's best. And Maggie is asking, do, do I find that pupils are too shy to sing online? Yes, certainly the, they, they can be, um, in which case you kind of go with, with, with more of the rhythm type, type stuff, or you ask them to bring their favourite toy along. I mean, I always have my Freddy the Frog, and it's amazing how often they will actually sing to the frog when they won't sing to me. Yeah, they won't sing to me, but they will often sing. If the frog sings to them, even online, they will sing back. Psychology <laughs> behind that. But good question, Maggie. Thank you for asking that. All right, folks, I think it's time to finish. My husband has been busy cooking my meal. <laughs> so I now have a delicious meal to, uh, to go and eat. Um, 
and thank you Sharon for, for hosting that so nicely and thank you to everybody. My and pleasure. And yes. it's your very first webinar then I hope you've enjoyed that and hope you've all got something to go off and do your, with your teaching either later on today or tomorrow. Absolutely. Listen, guys, thank you so much for being with us for the past hour and a bit. We have loved having you and we hope to see you again very soon. Take care, stay safe. Lots of love. Bye.